The City Dilemma. What's up guys, Luke here from Luke's Points and Miles. Today I wanna to talk about The City Dilemma. Before I start, let me first say that this video or this talk is coming from a position of really liking city credit cards and city thank you points. I think if anyone reviewed a city setup in a vacuum, that is to say completely by themselves without comparing it to other issuers, they would say that insane value can be had from city credit cards. But we don't live in a vacuum and there are tons of competition. So today I wanna to talk about city as an issuer, some of their products and if they should be a player in the credit card game. Now I will say that I do hold city cards and I do use city cards and I'll include how I use them just to be transparent. I'll go over city pros and cons and I'll give you my take. Then I'll include what I think is the best city strategy for most people. Before I get started, do me a favor and slap that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for that and I'll get straight to it. So as I promised, I want to state that I use the City Premier and the City Custom Cash as well as a City American Airlines business card. As far as the City Custom Cash, I use that card in my rewards points setup as my dedicated gas card. I say my rewards points set up because I also have a cash back set up. And for now, I use a different card for that set up. We'll talk more about the custom cash later. As for the Premier, it doesn't get much use at this moment due to competition. Okay, so first I wanna point out some well-known negative aspects of using a city setup or using city cards. None of these ideas are unique or mind-blowing but they need to be mentioned. City cards are not the easiest card to be approved for, and they don't have the highest bonuses. I didn't mention having a city double cash because I really don't think I can get approved for it. The standard bonus for the city custom cash is $200 or 20,000 city thank you points, which I think is fine. The premier card bonus is usually 60,000, which isn't bad, but it does creep up to 80,000 once in a while, and that is actually when I got it. The double cash usually does not have a bonus, but occasionally, and I think right now, the card does have a $200 cash back bonus, which is also 20,000 thank you points. I guess when you break it down, the bonuses are just fine, but in my experience, they're very less churnable, and I had to apply for the Premier three times, and I only got the custom cash through a product change. So for me at least, city cards have been a little difficult to procure. I'd label them much more difficult to get than American Express or Chase cards. Capital One, you guys understand, we never really know with them. This next one is a point that has been beaten to death, but it still has plenty of merit. City travel cards don't have any travel protections. Personally, I don't put a ton of value on travel protections, but I can understand those that do. And the older and wiser I get, the more I think about those things. Not having those coverages during these chaotic times could cause a little more stress than any of us need. I use a lot of Amex cards and Chase cards, and one thing I really try to maximize are the little merchant offers they have. Little things like an extra 5% back at a certain gas station, or maybe an additional five times MR points at a merchant I like to buy from. The yearly savings from those offers can vary from person to person, but I seem to get crazy value just from those offers. Oftentimes mitigating any annual fees I have on those cards. City, in my opinion, or in my experience, seems to fall short here. They do have offers, but I feel like they aren't as frequent or as easy to use. Someone out there is killing it with city offers, so if you are, please comment below and tell me about it. I'm gonna just group these last ones in together because I don't have a whole lot to say about them. I think it's a negative that you need a $95 annual fee card to access travel partners. I know, I know, it's the same with Chase, but I do think the Chase $95 Sapphire Preferred and even the Chase Business Inc. Preferred are a little different animal here and I think they come with a lot more benefits. The City Premier is a great card and one could argue that $95 is a bargain, but I still think it's worth mentioning that you need to pay to play. Speaking of partners, City doesn't include a real domestic airline 
from one of the legacy carriers or more used brands. They have JetBlue, but that is really limited for most of the US. Chase has United and Southwest, and even though no one would recommend transferring to them, Amex has Delta. I also wanna mention that the City Custom Cash and the Double Cash both have foreign transaction fees. So if you're doing that international travel, we do have some issues here. I'm not paying a 3% fee. I'm an American, my money is good everywhere on this planet. Debatable statement, but I'm mostly joking anyway. I just don't wanna pay 3% in fees. The Premier has no foreign transaction fees, but if you're comparing to Capital One, none of those cards do. But City isn't all bad. I wanna mention some really good aspects of using City cards. I think you can rack up lots of points with a relatively small and simple setup. If transferable currencies are your earnings of choice, then you're going to do much better with City than you will with Chase for much cheaper than you will with Amex. Comparing to Capital One might be very close. With a City trifecta, you can earn three times on supermarkets, and that's worldwide. Three times on gas, a category missing with Chase personal cards. Three times on restaurants, and one that is often misunderstood. Three times on travel. Travel being hotels, airlines, and travel agents. From what I understand, and if anyone knows this to be untrue, please put it in the comments, but travel agents includes third-party travel agencies, sites such as Expedia. So the technique of booking travel through Expedia by way of Rakuten, for example, can stack earnings on top of earnings. I've heard this mentioned by at least one of my subscribers, but he uses this technique with the Amex green card. Either way, this could be three times thank you points plus more cash back or Amex MR points on top of that if you book through Rakuten. Now also know that you'll be earning five times with the city custom cash in a very versatile way, and that could be with travel, transit, or even live entertainment. And we'll include the double cash for a great catch-all two times on everything card. Now earlier we mentioned the $95 annual fee with the Premier card, and I know most folks have trouble mitigating that, but you can earn a $100 credit when you book a hotel with the thank you portal that costs at least $500. I actually used this benefit back in January when I booked my hotel in Panama City, Panama, and the credit was automatic and easy to use. I've always had a very negative stance on portals, but I'm actually easing up on that as I slowly progress into a travel points free agent. Another positive thing about City, they have available a legit trifecta that actually earns and seems like it's supposed to fit together. And one more thing that I rarely mention is that City cards can have a really great balance transfer offer, like 0% for 18 months. I don't like to talk about those because I really do think we need to be paying off these balances every month if we wanna be in the rewards game, but I do know life happens. So what's my take on City cards? Well, like I said at the beginning of this, I like the cards. I think they might be a candidate as a secondary issuer, maybe. You can definitely earn points and you can transfer those points out to great partners. Examples being Air France, Flying Blue, Avianca, Turkish, and Virgin. And now I have to mention Wyndham because they have such a huge following. One thing about City Thank You Points also is they transfer to choice at a rate of one to two. So in certain properties, you can get amazing value. But here's the question. Do you need a secondary issuer? Maybe to take advantage of transfer bonuses, have a little more diversity? Well, I think Capital One might be a simple and better way to maintain a secondary issuer with the VentureX and the Saver One combo. I think that duo does everything the city trifecta does, and it includes a ton more benefits. What about a setup? That includes the City Trifecta and a premium travel card such as the Chase Sapphire Reserve or Capital One Venture X. Now that could be interesting. You can always transfer thank you points to a partner and then pay the taxes and fees with your premium travel card and that would solve the protections issue. But then wouldn't again the Capital One still be a better option? 
In any case, I know there is at least one great strategy with city cards and it will allow you to kind of try them out. I think the custom cash could be part of any cash back setup. And I think the city premiere will always be good for the first year. If city doesn't work out for you, you can normally product change the premiere to another or second custom cash. Folks have multiples of that card and they enjoy 5% cash back and lots of versatility. At the end of the day, I think city cards are just fine, but it's very hard to rank them higher than the competitors. Can you play this game, travel the world in style, and collect tons of cash back with city cards? For sure. But can you do it better with other issuers? Well, that's for you to decide. I'm hoping this video shed some light on the pros and cons of city cards. If you have any interest in the cards I talked about today, check out my links in the description. And if you have stayed around all the way to the end, I appreciate you and I thank every single one of you.